Hey, what is up mortals? It is Grog Funky here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 8 of What If Deku Was a Dragon Slayer. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so, we begin. The principal decided to give Class 1A three days off from their studies. The bear dog decided to do this in light of the attack on the USJ, and the escape of Shigaraki and Kurogiri from police custody. This time allowed the police to gather the information they needed from the students and staff. Nezu and the UA staff took the break to discuss what measures they were going to take going forward. Midoriya used these days to recuperate from his injuries. Turned out that the green-haired boy had received several fractured ribs from his fight with Nomu. Thankfully, Wendy offered to help heal him up. After two hours of healing and a day of sleep, Midoriya was back to normal. On the second day of the break, Midoriya was in his room writing notes in his notebooks. Like a fiend. The attack on the USJ gave the students of 1A a first-hand look at the evil they would face when they graduated from UA. Midoriya knew that he needed to train even harder. Wendy and Recovery Girl had ordered Midoriya to not do any physical training over the break. So, if the green teen could not train his body, he would train his mind. At some point, the studious boy's mind turned towards his classmate, Todoroki. Midoriya wondered why the two-toned boy would refuse to use half of his power. Midoriya did not know. But from the look on the serious teen's face, it must have been a very painful reason. Midoriya finally decided that he would not push the subject. After all, Midoriya barely knew Todoroki, and he did not feel comfortable making such an inquiry. The intelligent teen was so lost in thought that he nearly jumped out of his seat when he heard a knock at his door. Ah! I mean, who is it? Inko Midoriya opened the door. Izuku, you have a guest! The loving woman had tears in her eyes. Izuku became concerned when he saw the tears in his mother's eyes. Mom, what is wrong? Did something bad happen? Inko wiped her eyes. Everything is fine, Izuku. Like I said, you have a guest. Okay, well, who is it? I'm not expecting anyone. Izuku got a quizzical look on his face as he rubbed his chin in confusion. Well, she said her name is Wendy Marvel. She's the girl you're always going on about, right? Azuku smiled at the news that Wendy had come to visit him. Wendy? Really? I wonder what she's doing here. Well, the easiest way to find out would be to come out and ask her. Good idea. Azuku got off the bed and walked towards his bedroom door. By the way, sweetie, is there anything going on between you two? What do you mean, Mom? It is just that you were really happy to hear that she had come to see you. And she's really cute. Izuku blushed at his mother's comments. Well, she is my friend, so of course I'd be happy to see her. Inko rubbed her chin and looked at her son with a knowing glance. Okay, Izuku. Well, just promise your mother you'll be careful. After all, she seems like a really nice girl. She is. She's also kind, supportive, caring, and thoughtful also. Interesting that you seem to know her so well. Good luck. The woman then led the now ruby-faced Zuku to the living room, where Wendy awaited the two. Wendy had come to Midoriya's home to check on the boy. While her cure magic had healed the boy's fractured bones, she wanted to make sure that the green-haired boy was taking it easy like the recovery girl told him. She knew the boy well enough to know that he would take any opportunity to train, a lot like Natsu in that way. Wendy saw Inko come down the hallway with a Zuku behind her. Wendy immediately got concerned when she saw how red his face was. Midoriya, are you okay? You look like you're running a fever. The small girl placed her hand on his forehead. This only made the boy turn even more red. Izuku shook his head to remove the thought his mother had placed there. When he had calmed down a little, he replied, I'm fine, Wendy. I just had a lot on my mind. What are you doing here? I came to make sure you're doing what Recovery Girl instructed you to do. I know how you are. Midoriya was surprised by this answer. I promise I've not done any training. The only thing I've been doing is homework and studying. Okay, that's good to hear. The pigtail girl paused and thought for a moment. Just so you know, everyone else is fine. It seems like they only got minor cuts and bruises. Everyone is determined to get back to training. I'm glad to hear that. How do you know that, Wendy? The tiny girl pointed her finger at Izuku. Did you forget that I'm the class representative? I feel it's my part of my job to make sure my classmates are doing well. You certainly are taking your position seriously. <laughs> of course I am! Everyone put their faith in me to lead the class. I'll do everything I can to make sure our class performs better. I know you can do it, Wendy. Azuku paused for a moment. 
He was unsure if he should say this, but he decided to say it anyway. I'm really glad you came to check on me, Wendy. I'm always happy to see you. Wendy got a mild blush from the Grinette's admission. That's really sweet of you, Izuku. I enjoy seeing you, too. It was at this point that Inko came back into the room. Miss Marvel, how about you join us for lunch? Uh, I wouldn't want to impose, Miss Midoriya. Nonsense. It wouldn't be an imposition at all. Besides, I'd like to get to know one of my son's friends. Okay, then. Sure. Excellent. Let me go get the food started. In short order, Inko prepared a delicious lunch. The three sat down to enjoy the food in each other's company. Meanwhile, in a hidden bar, Shigaraki, Kurogiri, and Zerif stood before a flat-screen television. The television was blank except for the words, Sound Only, displayed in purple text across the black screen. Suddenly, a deep, calm voice spoke through the speakers of the television. The voice had a malignant tone to it, but it had no emotion. Well, you failed, Tomura. It wasn't my fault, Master. Those little punks were way stronger than they should have been. They should not have been that strong. It would seem that Yue has several students that could prove very dangerous. Let me have another shot at them, Master. I'll not fail again. I will destroy them all. No. Going after the children again would be foolhardy. For now, Tomura, I think about the ways that you must improve. This is all a game. Fail as many times as you need to. This is all for you, my boy. Thank you, Master. Now, if you would go to your room, I need to speak with Zara for a moment. Whatever you say, Master. Shigaraki left the room with a look of absolute hatred on his face. Now, Zaref, thank you for your assistance. Our partnership made it necessary for me to act. But I do not see what you see in that boy. He is filled with far too much hatred. Tomura will serve his purpose. Now, about our deal, we need to discuss our next steps. I would agree. While Tomura did not kill All Might as planned, he did accomplish the first step. The dark-haired man mused for a moment. You do play the long game. Hopefully we can both get what we want out of this plan. Let us hope so, or you will not get the prize you seek. Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, and Safari. If it's a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, or even Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these major sites is click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. It takes two clicks to install Honey. Now, anytime you check out, Honey will scan the entire internet and find a coupon code just for you. If there's a coupon code, they will find it. And if there's not a coupon code, you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible and there's literally not one available on the internet. If you install Honey right now, you can save like $50 to $100 on your shopping, doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews, and unless you hate money, you should install Honey. After the three-day break ended, the members of Class 1A gathered in their homerooms. The biggest question on the students' mind was who was going to be teaching them. All of the students knew that Urza was in rough shape after the USJ attack, so most of the students figured that someone else would be covering their class. These wonders would be answered as the classroom door slid open. The open door revealed that there would be no substitute. Urza stood in the doorway, but in an unusual condition. She was covered in bandages from her head to her toes, and both of her arms were in casts. Suyu Asui was the first to speak. Miss Scarlet, it's good to see that you're okay, Ribbit. Mina Ashido got a freak-out look on her face. The pink girl spoke in a worried tone. You call that all right? She looks like a mummy. Mineta then broke in with an unwelcome privy comment. Yeah, but she's a really hot mummy. Out of nowhere, a sword appeared. The tip was pointed at Mineta's chest. The ball-headed boy was naturally freaked out. Urza's glare was so fiery that the students could see it even from beneath the bandages over her eyes. The crimson-haired woman then spoke in a stern tone. Watch your mouth, great boy. Manetta sat in his chair, his whole body trembling with fear. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. With that apology, Urza made the sword vanish. 
Thank you all for your concern, but my condition is unimportant. The truth is, your fight is not over with. The whole class was shocked at this statement. Some of them hoped that they would not have to face more villains, while other students were curious about their teacher's choice of wording. In a flat tone, Urza replied to the students, The UA Sports Festival is coming. This comment made the majority of the class jump from their seats in excitement. Minetta was the only one who remained fearful. Oh, this is really bad. I'm gonna die. Minetta, don't you know how important the school festival is? Minetta responded in a panicked voice. Of course I do, stupid. I just don't want to get murdered. Important is putting it mildly, students. Ever since quirks became the norm, athletic competitions like the Olympics fell by the wayside, most being seen as pointless in a world with superpowers. For anyone in Japan who cares about competition, they are watching the UA Sports Festival. Pro heroes will also be watching and attending the festival. Perform well and these agencies might recruit you. Urza let that information sink in before she continued. You have one chance a year, and three chances in your lifetime. I would strongly encourage you to not waste this opportunity. Jiro was bothered by something during this talk. Sensei, is it a good idea to hold such a public event after the USJ? That is a valid concern. The administration believes that holding the sport festival will show that UA is still strong and secure. Plus, this is an event that the whole country looks forward to every year. We cannot just cancel it. I guess you have a point. Of course, the security will be greater than in years past, so hopefully it will go off without a hitch. So don't slack on your training. I expect you all to perform at your best. Good luck to you all. At the end of the day, Wendy slid the door open as the class prepared to leave. The petite girl was surprised to find a whole crowd of students standing outside the door. What is going on here? What are all of you doing here? Bakugo walked up and replied to the Blue Nets question. They're here checking out the competition. After all, we are the class that foiled a villain attack. Of course they're going to check us out. Bakugo walked up to the group without any fear. Move it, extras, and let me through. This statement caused the whole crowd to become enraged. Bakugo, you're making all of them mad at us. Apologize immediately. No way. We're not here to make friends. None of these people matter. The only thing that matters is getting the top spot. The crowd parted as Bakugo calmly walked away. Kirishima responded to the scene with tears in his eyes. That exit was so manly! After a few declarations of war, the other Class 1A students were able to leave the room. Over the following weeks, the students upped their training. All of them knew that none of the students were going to take it easy. While Bakugo had made an enemy out of everyone, his statement had lit a fire under his classmates. None of them wanted to be known as the weak link. Finally, the day of the festival arrived. Class 1A was waiting for the start of the events. Todoroki walked up to Midoriya. Midoriya, I think when it comes to power and capability, we're the strongest in this class. I plan to show that my strength is greater. Midoriya was shocked by the statement, but the grenette responded with vigor. You can certainly try, Todoroki, but I don't plan on taking second place. I'm aiming for the top. Kaminari responded to this exchange. Boy, there are a lot of declarations of war being made lately. But you two aren't the only ones aiming for the gold. I plan on getting it, too. Wendy then spoke up. That goes for the rest of us, Todoroki. None of us plan on holding back in this, so bring your A-game. Todoroki looked at the faces of his classmates and saw the determination in their eyes. However, the bicolored teen's face showed no emotion as he replied. Have it your way. My best is what you'll get. Class 1A was told to make their way to the field, and they did so. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen! The UA Sports Festival has come again! Let's introduce these awesome first years! You know this crew is the class that has stopped a villain attack! It is the indomitable Class 1A! President Mike then took it in turn to introduce the other first year classes as they entered the field. All the students stood probably on the stadium field. All of them were energized for the day ahead of them, but also a little nervous. After a very short pause for effect, Mike made another introduction. Now that you've met all the students, I'm pleased to introduce the referee for the first year competition, Midnight! The R-rated hero walked onto the stage in the center of the field. Many of the boys wondered why she was wearing such a revealing costume as they waited for her to speak. Welcome, everyone. Before we begin, we have the first year's pledge. This honor goes to Wendy Marvel. Wendy walked slowly up to the stage, cowering all the way. Mina Ashido saw this and asked Midoriya, who was standing in front of her, a question. 
Midoriya, is Wendy okay? I mean, her whole body is shaking and her eyes are glossed over. I think she's nervous. I don't think she's ever spoken in front of a big crowd like this. Oh, that makes sense. I feel for her. Wendy got up on the stage and approached the microphone. Midnight lowered the microphone for her. The blue-haired girl stood in front of the device, her whole body trembling with nervous energy. She took a deep breath and started to speak. I just wanted to say... Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would like to let you know that we, the Celestials, have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below.